This video is sponsored by PCBWay. I need a melty in a hurry, so we are gonna do some recycling. This is my box of old Melty chassis. As you can see, I've built a lot of Melties recently, so I have a lot of parts. And in here, there is something that I know that we can use. I mean, there's lots and lots of different cut bits of HDPE from various different versions, but there is also the full chassis of TBH, which we are going to use, uh, but we're going to change up the weapons because right now this is just running some of the vert weapons very haphazardly bolted in and this is this is not done very well. I, I'll show you what I mean. These weapons are only held in at three points and they have a star shape in them, which means that things can move around and jitter and if I show this to camera, you can maybe just about see that some of these bolts, especially this one here, are very bent from having been in this configuration already. So I have some brand new teeth, which are cut out of hardened steel, and these I want to use on this. But obviously we can't do that right now because there's no way to mount them. So we need to take this whole thing apart so that we can drill new holes and mount new weapons properly this time. Actually, before we get into the hardware breakdown of this thing, because I think I might need extra holes in it, we're going to look at the electronics instead. So I am running out of time, obviously, which is why we're doing a rush recycle build here. And that means that my Melty Brain RUD with the vertical spinners is going to just stay on its current electronic set, which means uh, the brand new Melty Brain system with the accelerometer in it that I put together to put in RUD can go elsewhere. And I think we're gonna put that in here. Now I've got enough stuff left over like receivers and ESCs and stuff to make this work. The one thing I don't have is a power switch and this robot is actually set up Right down in the back here, there is two bolt holes for a finger tech switch. However, I've only got one of those, I think, and it is currently in RUD. So I need another solution. And that's where PCBWay comes in. Now, to be fair, this rush build uh, is actually just taking use of something I was designing anyway, and that is these which are parts for an absolutely tiny screw switch system. Well, it's not actually that small, to be honest. It's designed to use an M4 brass bolt between the two contacts, and there is enough surface area here to run 4S at, I think, 50 amps without massively overheating and destroying the parts that I'm gonna put around this to actually make it into a proper screw switch. Now, the other thing I've done here, as you can see, these are nicely gold plated. So normally I just get a silver plating on PCBs like this, but these ones, because they're going to actually contact and transmit power, need the higher conductivity that gold will give. So I've given these a nice gold coating and they look really, really cool. Now. PCBWay did send a whole bunch of these to me. In fact, I've even got more, so I'm going to be able to make a bunch of power switches with these if these work out well, which I think they should. I've gone through and designed enough stuff into these that these should work exactly as they need to and not heat up and not explode and just power the robot really nicely. But of course, to put this stuff together, we need a body of the switch because this is not good enough on its own. So here I have a tiny little TPU printed block with bolt hole spacings that exactly match up to a finger tech switch. Now, for those of you who don't know, if you print TPU, because it's a kind of rubbery filament, it actually holds bolts really well and you cannot get them to shake back out. It's kind of like a nylock, but it's like printing a nylock in that respect. It's kind of cool. So with this whole body printed out of TPU, I should just be able to thread the bolts into these bolt holes and the whole thing will hold itself to the wall of the melty brain that we're about to spin. Uh, I'm obviously putting these screw switches into basically the most intense situation I can put them in. So if they work, they are going to work for basically anything you can, any beetle you can throw these at. So here you go, this is how this switch all lines up. I'm gonna glue these down like so. And then all you need to do is screw the switch down to make contact with the two pads and then it should 
act as a switch. The thing I like about this is it means that when the whole switch is powered off, like it currently is, uh, the bolt is only contacting the TPU block. It's not actually contacting either PCB, which means that this screw is not live when the robot is off. It can be a problem with the Fingertech switch if you wire it in back to front. They do have a suggested wiring guide for the Fingertech switches, but again, if you mess it up, you can have it so that your bolt is live all the time, which means when you put an Allen key in, that Allen key is live and can short things out. I also actually think I want a little top plate just to cover these pads a little bit better uh, and yeah, make it so that when the bolt is raised up, you can't really see anything other than just the output section. So anyway, let's, let's glue. Okay, so that's those glued up. Now, before we put a top plate on these, I do want to just double check that they're actually working the way they're supposed to, which in this case means threading a brass bolt into this one. The only thing I don't like about this brass bolt is the fact that it's a slot head rather than like anything else. Uh, it would be nice if it was an Allen key, but of course uh, that is not what we've got here. So that's getting it pretty close to the bottom. I'm going to put my multimeter into connectivity mode. Makes a nice annoying beep when you touch the terminals. Now when we do this, touch those two, we should get nothing. Yep, what I'm actually gonna do is we're gonna connect this up with alligator leads. All right, with these hooked up, they are kind of going off screen a little bit, but you can see where they are anyway. Uh, we should then just be able to... Oh yeah, look at that. Connection nice and easily. That is great. So it really doesn't take a lot to turn on or off. These being a beta weight switch, they are going to be contacting 3S and 4S in my beetles, which means that there is a possibility that I'm going to burn these contacts out because you get small arcs and things when you do a switch like this. So it's probably a good thing that I have multiple of them. Okay, I think that is enough looking at these switches. I think it is now time to break down TBH and turn it into our brand new Melty. Wow, these bolts are absolutely mangled. These are an 8.8 .8 grade hardened, well, hardened-ish steel bolt, and they are absolutely busted. Um, I even actually bent one of the M8s. I, I think these are M4s here. There are other M4s or M5s, I don't, can't remember. I also bent this M8 here too which is absolutely wild. And honestly, all of this is probably just because they were going through the weapons that look like this and there's no real support for that. So they're just bent here, there and everywhere. Now that took a little bit of time to get all of that out. Uh, so I think we're just gonna kind of skip this. So, but, well, that's, that's a little better. We've got more of it apart, but um, come on, this, this really needs to work this time. Hey, there we go, that's a lot better. Now we have some drill guides, so I need to bolt this into about here, and that is gonna tell me where to drill the bolt holes that will hold the melty brain in place, because that actually holds it right where it needs to be with the center of rotation right here. And then we have some other drill guides, which will help me line up where the weapon mounts need to be so that we can bolt in our nice big steel teeth 
at the front here. So it is time to kind of bolt these down and then drill a bunch of holes. Okay, we are really starting to run out of time. Right now it is 11 o'clock the night before the event uh, and yeah, we're here. So I drilled those holes on camera with you and then I have attached in the Teensy and the accelerometer and uh, that's about it. I'll also, I wired up a wiring harness. Some of these things are a lot faster to do when I don't have to film them, uh, and that's why I just kind of did those. And again, it's 11 o'clock the night before the event. So this video is definitely gonna happen after the event. Uh, so there might even be some footage coming up soon of doing some testing. But the first thing we're gonna do here is wire, or not wire, uh, mount in this new switch which should go into here. Uh, and after that I worked it out. It's the other bolt hole, the one that's partially off the piece of HDPE. That's why I didn't really use this design for very long. It's not perfect. It's really not the greatest design. It certainly could be better. And things like this probably shouldn't exist where the bolt comes off the edge like this, but uh, for now, that's gonna hold and do the job. So we move on. Okay, we have the walls in and we're getting to a point of questionable decisions uh, made at a couple of different points in the build process here. The first of all being that there is massive gaps between walls. I can stick my finger all the way in here. And in the original version of this, I literally just duct taped those gaps closed. And uh, look, we don't have time, so we're doing that again, basically. And the second questionable decision is a BEC to power the Teensy. I don't have one. So this here is a brushless motor controller, an ESC, that I am just bodging into this circuit to use the BEC off of it to power that. That's it. Um, that's how this is getting power, which is very silly. It's probably not a great idea but it will work for this competition and I have the space and weight for it, I think. It should, I should have the space and weight for it, uh, especially as I should be able to tuck this in underneath everything else and in underneath the switch is where I kind of want this to sit with that. As long as we can plug it into its power connector that I've already sold it into the wiring harness because I made this decision about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> so late at night, right before a competition, which is why it's a silly, silly idea, but you know, do what we've got to do. Okay, uh, for better or worse, all of our tape is reapplied. Now it is time to put in the M4 bolts and then we can put the top plate on. It's just better to put these M4 bolts in now, just because you want to kind of get them around, or at least I want to try and get them around all of the electronics that fit in everywhere. Oh, and these are apparently going to require me to screw them all the way in, which is exactly what I need right about now. But actually, I need to stop just before the top plate so that when I inevitably need to screw these into the top plate too, uh, I can do that. Anyway. Continuing on, and there we go, we have a lid on as well. This just clicks into place, and now I'm just uh, screwing all of these M4 bolts up above the surface level, so I can put some nylocks on them in a second here. Um, the interesting thing is gonna be fitting a battery in here. It's actually tighter in there than I thought it was, so this could be slightly more problematic but I need to lock all of these down first, so I'm gonna do that. All right, we are locked together. We're actually starting to look like a melty brain now. Uh, I will have to put these weapon teeth on later is the problem because uh, these are laser cut, which means that they need to be filed out a little bit just to kind of ease out some of the rough sections before an M6 bolt will go through. And I'm gonna do that tomorrow, uh, um, which will be at the event, but that's fine. Uh, because I, we have to get through safety and stuff without having those on the robot. 
Um, yeah, so I can I can put those on at any time, he says, knowing that realistically sooner rather than later is better. Hopefully. Now, that should be off. Yes. Good. Ah. It could be that my own wiring is the thing that messes me up here. Right on top of the accelerometer, that doesn't feel great, but it does sit there. Okay. And then we have a nice little um, top plate, which I think is the old top plate for this robot. Comes pre-googly-eyed, which is always a bonus. Um, yeah, look at that. We're together. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think that's it for right now. I, I think I need to sleep and do this filing and put these blades on at Havoc. So the next thing you will see is either that footage or some test footage. I don't know, we'll see. And so that is exactly what I did at my pit table at the event while everybody else was going through safeties. I sanded down the bolt holes for all of the weapons and then I bolted them into the robot. This took a little while because lining everything up and getting it all to fit correctly did take a second just because getting everything to work when you've got multiple sliding pieces is never the easiest thing in the world. And of course, I was under a time crunch. I had to get into the arena and at least get myself safetyed before the fights started. Speaking of which, once we got everything bolted together, it was time to do safeties. Now, I didn't actually film a kind of after shot of building the robot, so you can just kind of see it here as I power everything up and then get it into the middle of the arena to do a spin-up test. And I'm gonna stop talking because, wow, this thing sounds terrifying when it's up to full speed. So there we go, that is the build done for a very rushed, recycled Melty Brain. Now, just before we end this video, I was just wanting to look at how this screw switch held up. I've zoomed in really close so you can't see the rest of the robot because we are post event at this point in time. And I don't wanna give anything away about what's going on out here. But I do wanna take this screw out and I wanna have a look at how the contacts are going in here. And that is actually looking pretty good. I don't see any real wear and tear in there. I don't see any of the plating really coming off. Let's take a look at the back of the bolt. So we have some minor marks here and there where the bolt seems to have like corroded slightly from the voltage arcing, but that is not that bad. And I think I could use this for multiple events before having to replace probably the whole lot, the bolt and the two copper plates, well, gold plated copper plates that run this screw switch. Anyway, that has worked out really, really well. I am pretty happy with that. And I'm pretty happy with being able to build an entire melty brain in like six hours the night before the event, basically. Oh, and I guess at the event itself. That is gonna be it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed that one and I will see you in the next video. <laughs>